Warning, if the unit has not been installed correctly with anti-tip prevention, there is a possibility of tipping over. Information is included in the owner's manual on installation requirements. Warning, disconnect supply voltage before removing or replacing any electrical components. The next portion of this video shows the refrigerator on its side. This was done to provide a better view of the lower components and for training purposes only. On the bottom of the box is located a drain pan. With the drain pan removed, the subcondenser pipe that is used to help in the evaporation process is visible. Here are the locations of the drains from the freezer and refrigerator compartments. Here are the four swivel casters. These should be used for moving the product into position only. Once in position, the product must be taken off the casters. The front stabilizing legs are a screw-up or screw-down configuration. Here is the rear leveling leg. It can be adjusted from the front using a 12 mm socket. The doors have a shock absorber. This is used to dampen the opening and closing of the doors. Even with the door empty, the door feels very heavy when opening and closing. A blue plastic water line is used for hookup to the house water supply. Water to the water dispenser comes through the lower hinge as on many models. The compressor compartment is accessed by lifting the upper grill. Here is where the customer has access to the water filter. The main shutoff switch is available for the customer to turn off the product or the tech for resetting the display in some service procedures. Note, this switch does not cut off power completely. There are still live circuits at the terminal block. For troubleshooting purposes, the compressor compartment panel must be removed. There are six screws on the panel and two screws on the plastic housing. Once the panel is removed, there is access to a number of components. Here are the two freezer door switches, one for the ice dispenser circuit and the other for the door position sensor used for the light, fan motor, and alarm, a dual water valve, the fill tube for the ice maker and wiring going to the fill tube heater, the compressor, and an overload protector. Plastic bags seal the door hinge electrical connectors. This bag seals the low voltage circuit connector going to the door. Under this cover is a bag that seals the high voltage connector that goes to the door. It is these connectors which must be disconnected for the door to be removed. If the connectors are exposed, the plastic bags should be reinstalled with new zip ties. Here are the two accumulators, condenser fan blade and condenser fan motor the water filter housing, filter dryer, condenser, and stepper motor for the three-way valve. The three-way valve is located behind the condenser coil plate. This is the refrigerator door switch used for the light, fan, and alarm. Here is where the terminal block is located. Troubleshooting checks can be made at the connectors once the cover is removed. To the right of the terminal block is the line filter. Warning, there is line voltage present at the filter even when the main switch is off. The main switch is in series after the filter and terminal block. There is a connector between the line cord and filter. To remove all supply voltage to the product, disconnect at this location. This will remove voltage to the filter, terminal block, and main switch. There is a fuse on the filter assembly. If the fuse is open, replace the filter assembly. The terminal block and line filter are attached to the front of the PCB box. This plastic housing contains three electronic boards. The main PCB, the SMPS or switch mode power supply, and the inverter board. Warning. There is line voltage present at the terminal block and filter unless the AC line connector is disconnected.
to access these boards with the supply voltage removed. Once the cover is off the board, the connectors on the terminal block must be removed. Note the large white color connectors have squeeze locks on both sides. Once the connectors are removed, disconnect the ground wires, the ice maker connector, and the main switch connector. There are two screws at the top which must be removed. With these screws removed, the plastic housing assembly which holds the three boards and terminal block can be removed from the compartment. This is highly recommended for board replacement. Note, be sure to protect the front of the refrigerator door when removing the housing assembly. Here is a close-up of the terminal block with the housing removed. To access the boards, pull the housing apart. Here are the SNPS or switch mode power supply, the inverter board, and the main PC board. To remove the main board, the SNPS and the inverter board must be removed first. The two smaller boards are mounted on a plastic frame. There are four screws holding the plastic frame to the housing. With the two boards removed, the main board is accessible. There are four screws holding the main board to the housing. With the board compartment removed, checks can be performed on the wiring connectors. The only purpose for accessing these boards would be to verify there are no wiring problems between the terminal block and the boards, or to verify there is no problem between the SMPS, inverter board, and the main control board. When reassembling, make sure the foam wiring protectors are back in place. Use these locator tabs to lock the bottom of the assembly into the compressor compartment during reinstallation. These boards have historically had very few service issues and low failure rates. Be sure to troubleshoot the components properly before condemning a board. To access the dispenser display, remove the dispenser tray which has one screw on the bottom and the two screws from the light shield. Once these screws are removed, lift up on the dispenser cover and disconnect the electrical connector from the display board. Here are the hooks that hold the display panel in place. To remove the display board, there are four screws. Once the cover is off the board, the display board and analog gauges are accessible. With the display panel off, the dispenser light, flapper, dispenser support, and micro switches are accessible. Removing the micro switches gives access to the cam assembly and flapper motor. The door handles are secured with hex head screws.